Hello once again, Monster Hobbies model car garage mechanics. Welcome back to another great Monster Hobbies model car unboxing video. So today we actually have a little bit of a switch up. We are going to be taking a look at this amazing AMT Ertl display case trailer. Yeah, this is the one with the glass top. And I know a lot of people have had a little bit of issues putting this one together. However, we're going to take a look at this thing. And at the end of the video, I'm going to show you one of these that my dad made many years ago. So without further ado, let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box. So we're going to take the model kit time machine all the way back to 1998 as we check out this amazing AMT Earl display case trailer. So what we're seeing here is actually the display case trailer on the front of the box and inside is AMT's 1932 Ford Rumble Seat Roadster. But we're not going to be looking at the Roadster, it's just the case. So the car is not actually in there. Ah. Uh... But anyway, this is still a great model kit for skill level two. And it does have a wonderful little cabinet right here with some great garage parts. On this side of the box, we can see the trailer without the car in it. And there is a lot of room in here for any of your AMT model cars. Again, this is a really cool little diorama trailer. And as you can see, it's got the little vents on the top as well as a clear body. You could paint this if you don't want anyone to know what your car is on the inside. On this side of the box, we can see the features that come with the trailer. So here's our opening cabinet, and there's a little air compressor hiding around here. There's also a large oil drum, a fire extinguisher, and two gas tanks, as well as a little arm here to hold up your trailer. And here we can see the trailer going into the operating opening back doors, along with the ramps. Now the reason why I'm showing this model is because you can still get these things on eBay. So let's have a look at what's inside by lifting off the box. And here we have the trailer instructions, as well as some chrome plated parts. We also have all those great clear parts in here. And then we've got some gray plastic molded pieces as well. And then down below we've got our four tires and this wonderful old blue printer. This is uh, what you'd send away to get an amazing magazine from AMT Ertl, although you can't get it anymore because this is from 1998. It started off with a trailer. Here we have AMT Ertl's Super Trailer, and this is a wonderful illustrated drawing of what you get inside. Right off the bat it says, painting this model is optional, choose your own painting scheme. So let's get this thing on the road. What we have here is our leaf springs for our trailer. And as you can see you got a wheel back and a pin, and a Firestone tire as well as a hubcap. You build two of these per side, and this pin will glue into here, this hole on the springs, same as on the other side. And you want to put the glue just in the hole, but not in the hole of the backing plate for the wheel. So be very careful that you get this just in the right spot. Otherwise, you'll glue your wheels on solid. Step two shows our cabinet going together. And here we have the back of the cabinet, as well as the bottom and the top. Then you have two doors which go in. So you want to glue the bottom in first, and then put in a door and a door, and then glue the top down and finish it all off with your handles, which are chrome plated. And again, do not glue in here and here or there and there, otherwise these doors will not open. Panel 3 shows our clear components going together, so you have the end of the trailer, the two sides, and the roof. Panel 4A shows our completed suspension from panel 1, and these go onto the trailer on the little pins. There's a hole right here at the center of the top of our springs. And I do believe this will allow the springs to pivot. We also have these metal bars that connect the two from side to side. Panel 4B shows the fenders going over top of our suspension, as well as the gigantic trailer hitch which glues up underneath. And then you have a plated lock right here for the trailer ball, as well as a brace underneath here. Panel 5 shows our clear trailer from panel 3 being glued down to the top of the trailer. And again, just like the cabinets, you want to put the doors in first here and here and guide them up into the holes in the top. Don't put any glue in there because otherwise the rear doors will not open. And then here we have a plated license plate holder which will glue on the edge of the bottom of this door. Panel 6A shows all our components coming together. 
Here we have little side trailer lights, as well as a chrome-plated handle, which goes on this door. We have some, again, for the back, which would be up here and down there. Here is a light on the back of our trailer there. We also have our chrome door handles going onto either side of the door. We have these auxiliary ramps, which will go into these little holes here to help you load your car into the trailer. And then up top, we have the three brake lights. And up front, we have three amber indicator lights. And then here is our cabinet being glued to the front of the trailer. Panel 6B shows the accessories that go with the trailer. And here we have a trailer hitch and ball. And this you can glue onto any of the other AMT model cars or trucks, or maybe some from other companies like Ravel, Monogram, Atlantis, whatever you want to do. Here we have our two-piece oil drum, as well as these little five cans. We have a bucket here, a two-piece gas tank, a two-piece fire extinguisher, and a four-piece air compressor. Left and right tanks, the motors up above. Here is the pulley, which glues in these two points. And then we have the wheels to help us move it along. Who wants to see some plastic? Raise your hand! Did I get you? <laughs> can see you watching the computer and flipping your hand in the air. All right, anyway, here we have the base of our trailer, and there is a lot of diamond plate on here, which is really nice. It's actually a crosshatch plate, not diamond. But look at that. That is where your car tires will go, and you've got a nice smooth center, just like on a real trailer of this magnitude. Now, mine does seem to be a little bit bent upwards, but I do believe that clear top will bring it back into alignment. So underneath we have a whole bunch of mold marks, which you'll have to clean up with your number 16 hobby blade. Here you can see the center pin where our suspension is going to go into place. And up along here on these edges, you can see seam lines that come off like there and there. Well, you're going to have to also remove those, but it's not a hard problem to correct. These are the little spots for our ramps to slot in. But overall, again, this is quite nice and very simplistic because it is a trailer after all. On this parts tree, we have our cabinet with the top and the bottom, the back and the two doors, as well as our two-piece oil drum. Here is our brace for the trailer hitch. This is actually a little pad that goes underneath, a little beam that acts as the balance for the front of the trailer. And then here we've got the trailer hitch as well as two blocks. We have the wheel backs and the springs. Now I do believe these blocks actually go on the trailer to hold our suspension in place. So overall, again, you can see there is quite a bit of flash. Ah! And there are mold marks. Uh, uh, uh. And then in the back, we have mold marks all over the place and on our drawers and doors and sink marks. So you're going to have to fill and sand these off. Get at them with the number 16 hobby blade again. But overall, this is not too bad considering this is the only kind of trailer of its type. On this parts tree, we have our two ramps to help you get the car into your trailer. We also have our fenders for the trailer. These are those little plastic axle things that go in between the suspensions. And then we have our bucket here, as well as the little pins to hold your wheels onto the truck. Or sorry, onto the trailer, I should say. Now, looking at the fenders, you can see big mold marks in there, as well as flash. Ah! And the bucket and our ramps. So again, you will need to clean all of that up with the number 16 hobby knife and your sandpapers and files and whatever else you guys use out there in hobby land. And uh, you'll get it all nice and smooth and looking perfect. I can see clearly now the clear parts are here. Well, here's the roof anyway. And you can see these little vents that are up on the top. Those I do believe on the real trailer would open up hinged somehow just to uh, let some air out. They could also be skylights, but as you can see, it is a little bit scuffed, and that's because all the plastic pieces were in one bag together. But overall, this is quite a big lid and will make a good little showcase. Here we have the sides of our trailer, and this is supposed to be an aluminum trailer. And that's why it has all the ribs in here, because that's the way this would be stamped out of aluminum. However, this is clear so that we can see our model cars inside as a display case. You have a little side door on here and all these little tabs on the edges. 
you have to clip them off and clean this with your hobby knives. Here we have our opening back doors as well as the front of the trailer. And again, that aluminum ribbing is carried on throughout the clear plastic parts. But like I said before, this should really be painted aluminum, but then you won't see the car inside. So that is all up to you. But it does look really good in clear as it is. The only issue is the minor scratches from this not being put in the bag with some paper in between each of the clear plastic parts. Here's our chrome parts tree, and you can see our two chrome gas tanks, as well as our little air compressor here with the belts and pulleys. There's our wonderful looking hubcaps for the trailer. And then here we have all the little lights and door handles, as well as the little thing to catch a trailer hitch ball and our fire extinguisher left and right. And then there's the front and back lights and a license plate. So again, bringing this up into the camera, you can see the nice detail on here. It's clean and crisp. Looks pretty good. These hubcaps almost look like they're from a 1970s Pontiac. Maybe a 73 or something. So you could always use them on something else if you really wanted to. The license plate has a big mold mark on the back of it, as you can see. But overall, mold marks are not too bad on this. They're all on the inside surfaces where we actually want them to be and not out here like in the center of the gas cans or anything like that. So again, these are really nice and will look great on your trailer. Here we have our tires for the display case trailer and these are the old school Firestone Supremes which came in a lot of the AMT kits back in the 60s and even up into the 90s. And AMT used to include one or the other of the Firestone tires. The first Firestone was just the regular Firestone tire, which was included in the 32 Fords and that. And then the Firestone Supremes usually came in the 1960s cars, like the 62 Buick or something like that. And I kind of like the Firestone Supremes because they have this little edge along them, and they were always sort of the next step up of the tires. So the tread on this is very simple. It's just bands that go and wrap around the outside. But these ones always did look a little bit better than the regular Firestone tire. Here's the trailer that my dad made and he decided to paint his with a trim clad light blue color. And as you can see, it does look quite very well done. There's the white wall tires along the side. My dad really loved white walls. And as we rotate this around, you can see the back doors which are opening and operational, but I can see where my dad had issues. And a lot of that has to do with how clear plastic goes when it gets glued together. And it leaves these little marks all over the place, which you can't really see by me rotating it here. But if we just stop for a moment and I just zoom the camera up and in, see if we can catch some of these little bit hard against my background. But right in here is a glue smudge. And uh, yeah, oh, you can kind of pick it up right there. And then down along this edge, you can see it's kind of white and cloudy. That again is the glue. And there isn't really anything that can be done to correct this. And that's what sort of made my dad upset. The only thing he did is used a piece of black bare metal foil up along this edge because that was really <laughs> glue ball crazy up there if you think the front looked bad. The other part is the chipping of the clear plastic which if I just move this down a little bit just like this you can see a bit of shattering from the clear plastic and that is the, just the nature of clear plastic. It is quite stiff and uh, very brittle. So you just have to be careful with it. But as you can see, these doors open fairly easily. So that is a good thing. And then you can get the ramps up to get your car in. So again, really a nice model. The only issue is that the effect of glue on clear plastic, basically. But overall, I mean, this looks great. Here's the trailer with the ramps down, and let's see if we can actually get an AMT model in here. 
So here it comes, the AMT 1949 Ford. All right, my front axles are not turning, <laughs> so that doesn't help. Let's just hold this in the back here. Yeah, she just makes it up through the door, through the roof. Okay. Oh, it's because I need to move the trailer back. There it is. So there it is with a model inside. Let's just get the ramps up, close the door. So this side has to go in first because the other side has a little ridge along it. And there it is. Okay, I'll just move the trailer back. So there's what our display trailer looks like with a 49 Ford in it. And as you can see, it is a good fit in there. It's not too uh, low on the roof of the trailer, so it's hitting the roof of the Ford. Just trying to compose here while I'm spinning this. So yeah, again, it looks pretty good and uh, will keep the dust off your Ford for sure. Not necessarily the trailer, but overall, again, you can see just how wonderful this looks once you get a model in there and get it all together. Here we have the accessories, which are supposed to go into the front cabinet of the trailer. So we have our oil drum right here, as well as a wash bucket. We have an air compressor. We have a fire extinguisher and the two oil or gas tanks. And Dad did a good job on them. You can see he's got a little yellow label there for the oil drum. Again, it looks really nice. Then our bucket, that one is just painted with some gray. He didn't do the bottoms at all. That's where he actually mounted them onto a plastic rod just to hold them, you know. So there's our little air compressor. As you can see, the belts and pulleys look quite nice on it. And Dad did paint up the top painted the little engine green and then a bit of red up there as well as green in the center of the wheels. One thing that you can do to fix this up because dad never had it is a Molotol paint pen that would end up making that look nice and chromed again. I might actually do that. I don't know. Then here we've got our fire extinguisher and dad painted the bottom of it red like it's supposed to be. And then our gas tanks again they have the uh, chrome removed, of course, where the dad cut them off the parts tree. But again, they can be cleaned up with a Molotol paint pen and you wouldn't even know that they were there. And again, same as this one. But uh, overall, these little accessories are quite nice. And we'll take a look and see if I can get them in the front cabinet. So it looks to me like there's some extras in here being the five little cans and this hose reel. And Dad actually built a little shelf up in here to hold those in. I don't think that's part of the kit. I'm not too sure. Look at the instructions again. Rewind the video and go back to the instructions. But here we have the air compressor. I put the fire extinguisher in the bucket. And then I have the two gas tanks. But I don't know how the oil drum's going to go in because of this shelf up here that uh, Dad put in. Or however that goes. So I'll just move that to the side and then here you can see the doors will almost close. The bucket is interfering. But overall, I mean, that's not too bad. And uh, you can always add those parts into your garage diorama and just leave them out of the cabinet. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video where we got to see AMT Ertl's display case trailer. And did you know that all those great equipment pieces like the air compressor and everything else were in this kit? I didn't actually know that. So wasn't that really cool to find out? And you can use these great pieces in a garage diorama. And if you want to see some other great garage diorama bits, check out this video right here. And don't forget to visit our store by clicking this little icon down here or go to www.monster-hobbies.ca and see what models we have in store for you today. Also, click that Join button and become a member, and that would greatly help out this channel. So until next time, everybody, keep your wheels on the road, and we will see you in the next video.